Hello guys and gals and welcome. So today we're going to be doing a special episode. Uh, this is for you single player players out there, you single player characters. Those of you who um, do not obviously play online with other people, whether it be ladder, non-ladder, um, or any kind of online content whatsoever, you are the, the few that have chosen to play essentially by yourself, right? And uh, I seem to have chinchilla fur on my nose. Which is not uncommon when you have a chinchilla. Uh, <laughs> so today what I hope to do, and I hope to impress upon you guys, is the advantages of playing single player. Uh, maybe this is stuff that you might not know. Maybe you play single player and you don't know about these things. Um, well, now you will. Uh, there's probably some of these things that you may have already figured out and some of these things which I'm going to teach you today. And then on top of that, um, those of you who play multiplayer may not know about any of these things because you may have never actually gone into the offline mode. Uh, so first off, let's talk about some of the simplest advantages of being an offline character. Um, single player, or rather offline, is an infinite number of characters. Um, no matter how many characters you would like to make, no matter how many slots you want to fill, you can continue to do so. You can essentially store an infinite number of items, um, whether it be through mod support, like Pluggy, or whether it be just simply by making a character named Natalia Set and putting the entire Natalia Set on them, or making a character called uh, Unique uh, Helmets and putting all the unique helmets on it. Uh, you can effectively store every single item that you ever find, um, you know, and uh, and have fun, like doing a holy grail or or uh, making as many characters as you would like. Um, the other interesting thing about offline mode is that you have access to certain commands that the online mode people do not. Um, so, for instance, if I wanted to respect my character, I would have to either a use my Akara quest, but I'm out of Akara quests. Or B, use a token. Um, and I'm not sure. Not 100% sure you can make tokens in uh, in single player. I'm pretty sure you can't in the original Diablo, but I think they added it in Diablo 2 Resurrected. I could be wrong on that. Feel free to correct me. Um, but one of the things that you can do in offline single player is you can use a command, which I go over in my video Seven Commands. If you want to uh, pull that up, I go over how to install this command and everything. Um, I'll have it in the description of this video for you guys. Uh, who play single player who would like to uh, to add it. But what it is is you actually add a command called dash enable respec and it allows you to respec your character at will. And this is really cool because the ability to respec your character like this enables you to have a lot of fun with um with you know changing your character specs and going through the process of uh, of experimenting with things um you know i could uh, i could take a character and i do this all the time on my videos where i take a character and i experiment and i'm like okay let's see what you know a uh, max level leap is like and then uh, go ahead and i you know put out as many points in the leap as i can or or let's see how many well you know points it takes to max out uh, you know war cry or something like that and i'll uh, i'll max out all the synergies for war cry and, uh, and we'll see how much damage Warcry does with all of his synergies. And then we have a, have a good idea. And then, you know, just like that, I can respec it and I can go back to what I was at and bam, done. Um, there are more commands. If you guys want to check out my uh, video, seven commands, I go over all the commands that you can use. Some of those actually can be used in online play, uh, but most of them are uh, offline single player experiences. Another interesting thing that you can do in single player that you cannot do in multiplayer is control the number of players in your game. Um, so essentially, because you're offline, they allow you to change this setting. And in the old days, you had to actually type in the command slash players and then the number of players that you would like it to be. Um, and then it will say game difficulty has been scaled um, to allow for eight players, as you can see right there. So game difficulty scale set to 8, uh, Diablo's minions grow stronger. So you can micromanage the number of players specifically that you uh, have in the game. Like maybe you want to put it to 6, maybe you want to put it to 3, maybe you want to put it to 2, etc., etc. And every 
single player count has its own advantages. Um, obviously, player count one is easier. Player count eight is the most difficult. Uh, players count seven is the best for magic finding, and so forth and so on. And you have the ability to micromanage your player count and what player counts mean. Um, if you're trying to get to level 99, for instance, it's a far easier to get to level 99 on players eight than it is to get to 99 on players one. Um, so online, you have to have other people and other friends come and help you uh, fill up the game. Otherwise, you're not going to get anywhere. Whereas in offline, you will have the ability to change your character, you know, your, your games to Players 8. Um, another interesting feature of offline games is the persistence of maps. So if you go to any zone in the game um, and you do not change your difficulty setting the map will remain. Um, so to give you an idea of this, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you um, exactly what I mean. So uh, here we are in the Frigid Highlands, and uh, I am going to uh, have some fun running around and exploring the map a little bit. Now, in online play, when you leave the game and when you enter the game again, the map is remade, essentially. Um, and this means that you can no longer utilize your old map for the new zone. But in single player, you have the ability to keep your map as long as you do not change your difficulty setting. And, uh, and I'm going to demonstrate that as well. So here we go. We've discovered a pretty large swath of the map. Um, and uh, now I'm going to leave the game. And I'm going to create a new game. And what you'll see is that the map stays. Um, this is single player map persistence. Um, single player has always been this way. The maps will always remain as long as you do not change difficulties. So one thing that you can do to increase your speed at farming a particular boss or um, you know, farming a particular monster, is you can essentially leave and exit um, the game until you get a map that you would like. As you can see, the map has already been pre-explored. Pre um, you can leave and exit to get a map that you would like, and then keep running that map over and over again. Um, have you ever, like for instance, went to go farm Mephisto? and you ended up with like the easiest map in the entire world, right? So the so the map is so ridiculously easy that you know you you like walk through the portal of the, the waypoint to your right is literally the way down. Like it's literally right there and you can farm Mephisto with the most ridiculous of ease. So what you would do is is you would go to a nightmare difficulty game. Then you would exit and then you would go back to the Hell Difficulty game. And what this does is it causes the map to, to respawn, to re, um, regenerate, essentially, to form a new map um, than it was before. And now when I go to Frigid Highlands, what you're going to see is that the map is no longer there. I no longer have the explored map because this is a new map. So one thing that you can do is you can go to, you know, for instance, like Durance of Hate, you can find a, uh, a, a really advantageous map layout. And as long as you do not change difficulty settings, you can keep this map layout so that you can farm, say, Mephisto super duper duper easy. Um, in online play, to do the same thing, you would essentially have to have map hack. Um, and this is one of the big differences between, for instance, farming, say, um, Pindleskin 30 times and farming uh, Bale 30 times. Um, you know, for Bale, you have to find his throne room in online play, and, and where his uh, throne room is, is changes depending on where, you know, it has been automatically generated. But for a uh, offline player who doesn't have to do that, you can find the easiest Worldstone keep possible, and you can use that for EXP runs, and you can do those repeatedly basically forever, and you'll know exactly where the waypoint is, you'll know exactly where the entrances are, you'll know exactly where everything is, because it'll be automatically generated on your map. Um, the only way that you would lose that is if, like I said, you change difficulty settings. Um, another very interesting thing about offline play, and this is kind of an odd one, um, is there's no hacking or cheating or botting or anything unless you're the one that's doing it. So um, it's a very legitimate 
Diablo 2 gameplay. Um, it's very much so, you know, the core of what Diablo is. And, you know, when you're online and you're playing ladder or something like that, there's a very good chance you could be playing with somebody who's using map hack. You could play with somebody who's using a bot program. You could play with somebody who's using, um, you know, uh, purchased items off of a real money trade website. But when you play by yourself, the very interesting thing is, of course, that, you know, you know exactly what's going on. If you cheated, you know whether you cheated. And, you know, <laughs> if you haven't cheated, you know whether you haven't cheated. And it's as simple as that. And this also comes down to um, other things. Like, say, for instance, you were playing a hardcore character. Um, you logged into your hardcore character. And I don't think I actually have one up here. Uh, these are all softcore characters. Uh, but let's pretend for a second that uh, you logged into your hardcore character. You know, you, you went in and... Um, you load it into Hell Difficulty, uh, maybe you got, I don't know, a little ways into Chaos Sanctuary, and your power goes out. Um, so, you know, you're you're moving your way down into Chaos Sanctuary, so let's let's go to Chaos Sanctuary real quick. Um, you're moving, you're moving down like this, you know, you're, you're heading in, and, uh, and you're right in the middle of a fight like this, and you're firing your arrows, and then all of a sudden... Oh no, the game crashed. And, or, or the game disconnected, or you're in hardcore mode and your girlfriend came up and spilled a drink on your keyboard or something. And you die, okay, in hardcore mode. You can now revive your character. There are ways that you can revive your character in single player. You can make the judgment call and you can essentially say to yourself, well, okay, um, you know, that wasn't me, okay? That wasn't on me. That was completely outside of my control it wasn't something that was you know something i did you know my cat like pooped on my literal literally pooped on my keyboard right in the middle of my gameplay i got super distracted poop was running down my arm i literally i died in hardcore like how is that my fault the cat pooped on my keyboard so you can make the choice to resurrect your character or leave him dead um, in those situations you have the you know the utmost control over you know, the, the life or the, the judgment and ruling of things, you know, like uh, if you're, you know, you're playing your hardcore character one day and um, uh, your like video card spazzes out and, uh, and all of a sudden the entire screen is just a multitude of colors and you can't even save and exit and you try hitting Alt F4, but your computer's kind of frozen up. But in your headphones, you can literally still hear the game playing. And I kid you not, this has happened to me before. Um, you know, these are situations that are outside of your control and you shouldn't be punished for them. And so in those situations, you can, of course, fix it. Um, but, you know, if you if you die in the normal method, you got the honor system, right? So, you know, like, okay, that was my bad. I died. I went into a place I wasn't supposed to. That's totally on me. Character's dead. Um, and there's more. So, um, you know, self solo self-found is a very fun way to play and many characters when they actually try solo self-found for the first time are um, very enticed by solo self-found so uh, solo self-found is basically the uh, idea that you do not accept items or equipment from anyone else other than yourself so you have to literally be there when it drops even you can do this even in multiplayer but you have to literally see it drop um, and you have to uh, you have to pick it up so if you don't find it yourself, basically, you can't use it. And um, single player is, of course, the epitome of solo self found because obviously you're not getting items from anyone um, in Diablo 2 Resurrected because you can't even play land. I really wish they would bring back land, by the way. Um, but it's just a very fun gameplay style, and um, you know, a lot of the times people go into a character with a a specific character in mind you know they're like they're like i want to play a javazon right and then they start finding all this really good bow equipment and they start finding all these like really freaking epic bow items and and like bow skillers and all this other stuff and they're just like well fine i'll make a bows on and uh, and that's the one of the fun things about solo self found is when you go through you actually have a lot of fun just sort of building a character around what you find you know, kind of like MacGyver, you know, uh, making making do with what he has, as opposed to, you know, like when you play online, you're like, I want to be this character, and then you go through the process of putting that character together, uh, which is a completely different experience.
Um, if you're brand new to the game, also playing through the game by yourself for the first time is definitely something that's very fun and rewarding. Um, I can understand the people who are online have been playing for like, you know, like 20 years who are skipping through everything and, and they're rushing all their characters to the end. But for those people who have only just started playing, it's very rewarding to play through the entire game by yourself at least one time. And uh, single player allows you to do that. More often than not, when you play online, you're going to end up getting rushed or pushed pushed faster than you should otherwise normally go. And um, and this is going to have a negative experience you know, impact on uh, how you view the game. Um, for those of us who've been playing for 20 years, you know, 22 years, the reason why we skip things is because we've done it a million times. Um, but, you know, I've actually kind of reverted these days. I actually play the full game anyway because I think it's more fun to play the full game. And plus, there's really not much difference between rushing to the end and actually walking the content. I found so many good items walking the content, uh, Zod runes, Burr runes, Jaw runes, Sir runes, uh, Maras, all sorts of beautiful items just by walking the content. And, uh, and I really, these days, I am more and more convinced that walking the content is the superior way to play Diablo 2. Um, you also level up and, and grow slowly and more consistently in Diablo 2 in single player. So, you know, like... It, this goes back to rushing. Um, you know, like when you level up your character in single player, you actually figure out the game mechanics. You start to understand how things work. Um, you go through the process of building your character a specific way. Um, it allows you to explore and experiment more in single player. Um, I mean, you you guys have seen my theory craft videos. I have theory craft videos on you know GGM cactus. I got theory craft videos on the rabbit wolf pack. I got uh, a theory craft video on the poison bomb. Um, these are all characters that I created specifically for single player so that I could test things out. And uh, once I tested them out, then I applied that information, that knowledge, uh, to my online characters. This character, for instance, Holy Moly, was one that I tested my Holy Bolt Godzilla build on. And, um, and it works. And if you guys want to test things out too, um, I have a another video, which I will also provide a link to, um, of my uh, my video on the Hero Editor and how to use it. And uh, Hero Editor is uh, is a very good tool to uh, test builds out with. And uh, once you've gotten your character together, you actually go and see how they function within the uh, the game world and in certain you know difficulty settings and things like that. And that's another really cool thing is you can go to like Players Eight. You could test out the character in Players Eight and see how well they do. Um, you know you can uh, you can then go forward and try and build that character um, and get it working. Like Sonic the Hooch Hag is my character that runs really fast. That is his goal in life. Um, <laughs> he has no other goal. Um, the other very interesting thing about single player is it's you versus the world. Um, you know, in many, many ways with single player, um, when you complete a quest, when you do your Ubers for the first time, when you, um, you know, when you kill your first Uber Diablo, whatever it may be, um, you know, it's your accomplishment. It's not somebody else's accomplishment. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's very much so, you know, I did this. Whereas online, it's very much so, you know, we did this. Unless you just avoided all contact with everyone while you were online. <laughs> um, and even then, at that point, you're only on Players 1. And, uh, and you know, Players 1 is definitely something that, uh, that is kind of a downside for online when you play by yourself. But I can certainly understand why they did it, because they wanted you to play with other people. Um, one of the other things that also is uh, very much an advantage for single player players is um, no lag. So, uh, you know, like when you're online and you're connected to a server, especially if you're playing with somebody who might not be in your particular region, you know, you've got uh, a ping and you've got lag, and that lag can get bad depending on how much prawn your brother's downloading in the background. And, uh, you know, it's it can be an, an issue. Um, in single player, obviously, you don't have any any ping. You don't have a connection to the server. You don't have to worry about getting your connection to the server lost, despite what I said earlier in the video. Um, it's, uh, you know, it being on, offline allows you to have fun playing offline. And uh, you don't need an internet connection. You could play Diablo 2 offline on a boat in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, as long as you got power and a laptop. Uh, or maybe you got a desktop on there. And then I think the final thing that single player has an advantage over online multiplayer is the overwhelming challenge of it. 
Um, and it, this one might be a little bit confusing. But in single player, some items are ridiculously hard to come by. Um, burr runes, jaw runes, they are ridiculously hard to come by. Um, when you're online and you're playing in a giant community and you've got millions of people that are all playing at the same time, you know, these rare items do tend to drop and you can trade for them. You can go out of your way to try and get them, utilizing other things that you found. Um, so, you know, like if you wanted to make yourself an infinity, which is, uh, you know, what, burr, burr, mal, ist, or whatever, um, you know, those that's two burr runes, and an ist rune, and a mal rune, those are rare runes. And as a single player character, making an infinity is a challenge. It is a very big challenge. And, um, you know, there is a sense of accomplishment and, and wonder when you are finally able to legitimately, not cheating, by the way, legitimately make yourself something like an infinity or a last wish on single player. It's, uh, it's, it's something of a, of a, you know, like, fireworks display, you know, when you finally get it and, and you get this rush of adrenaline that you finally were able to complete something that's probably taken you years to do, um, which, by the way, you know, it, it really does because, you know, you might find maybe like one or two burrs or jaws like in 20 years of playing and uh, and being able to put together an affinity on single player is, is like I said, quite an accomplishment uh, without cheating, of course. Um. So anyway, it's already been 21 minutes, and I think I've talked enough on single player. Um, but I'd love to hear you guys' comments. Uh, what else do you think single player has an advantage of? Um, and I'm not saying this video is, you know, to to like usurp online play. I do believe that playing online with other people is just more fun in general. But I wanted to go over the benefits. The, the pros, essentially, of single player and uh, and talk about what you could do with uh, single player, you know? I feel like um, there are a lot of people out there who probably play single player. I, I have played single player quite a lot in my time. And, um, you know, it is uh, it is something that is fun to do. And and as long as you have the willpower not to cheat, you know, you, you're, uh, you're usually just fine. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos. Uh, and uh, keep watching. Thank you.